Hi, this is John Leslie. Let me show you an overview of the Favreau Relations column, followed by four practical examples of how it can be used. So to begin with, let's take a look at this product backlog full of product backlog items being worked on by two teams, Team A and Team B. So if I want to see the status relative to each team, I can simply come in here to the product backlog, click the plus, select relations, all boards, create. And now when I add a product backlog item to a team's board, you can see that automatically reflected here in the relations column. Say team B was also working on the same price search product backlog item simultaneously. We can now see in this overall relations column, the status relative to both Team A and Team B. Now, maybe I want to be very specific as to which status I want to show and have a unique column for each one of those team boards. To do that, I can click plus, add another relations column, filter down to just the team status I want to see, maybe Team A, create, and there you have it. Now I can do the same thing for Team B, add another relations column, filter down to just Team B. So now for all of my product backlog items, when I drag them to a particular team board, I'll be able to very clearly see the status across both teams. Like so. Now back here, if I click this overall all boards relations column that's not filtered, I get this nice drop down, which is now completely in line with what you see at the top of the card. When you open up the card, I can also reorder the sequence of this in line. So if I wanted team B to be displayed first, I could just drag it up here like this. You can see team B is now first. And that is also kept in sync at the top of the card. If I also wanted to quickly filter down to just one of these statuses, I could also click here, click the one I want to filter down to, say set as board relations filter, and done like this. I also have the ability to add this particular card to another board directly from this drop down as well. Now let me show you some other practical examples of how this relations column can be used. For our first two practical examples, let's take a look at things from a SaaS company standpoint. Maybe working on this example, SaaS product product AI one. We have a development team here working out of this product backlog. Say in their current sprint, they're just about to commit to this person search feature. Drag and drop like this. So thanks to the existing relations column showing all of the boards that these cards exist on, we can see that that team currently has that feature in their sprint backlog. We can also see all of these other features, uh, maybe are on product roadmaps, on other team boards. So we might want to simplify this and filter down to just that development team status. To quickly do that, we can click here, drop down, find that board, and say set filter to that particular board and maybe rename this now specifically what it is, development status. As this progresses to in development, maybe QA review, you can see those status changes back here very specifically thanks to this filtered relations column in the backlog. Now when this person search feature moved to QA review via automations, it also added that particular card to the DevOps team's board. Maybe now that this particular feature is in QA review from a development team status, it's now time for the DevOps team to start doing what they need to do to get this particular feature ready for release. To very specifically now see the DevOps team status, we can click plus again, relations, and filter down to just that DevOps team's board and maybe we want to rename this, or we could keep it the same. We'll rename it DevOps status. Continuing on 
with another SaaS example, maybe also this is, needs to be worked on by a marketing team simultaneously to get this feature ultimately released to the customers. So we'll add a, another relations column, call it marketing status, and filter down to just the marketing team's board. Now via this column, we can also directly add this card to the marketing team. Just click plus, add to board, and maybe add it to the first column of their particular flow sprint backlog. So now you can see here on that marketing team board that indeed person search has been added to their board and they can start going through their flow. So now thanks to these three very distinct relations columns filtered down to the very specific team boards, we can very clearly see the development team status for each feature, the DevOps status for each feature, and the marketing status for each feature in this product backlog. For our next two examples, let's take a look at things from maybe a game development studio perspective. So here in this game development studio organization, you can see that we have all of these various teams working on this Shadow Recon game, including an art asset team. That art asset team is working out of this art asset backlog. And each one of these art assets is going through this art asset pipeline from sketch to illustration, model and texture, all the way through to end game. So say from the backlog, we want to track the status of all of these various art assets across all of these art asset types the status of each one of these relative to this pipeline flow. So we would again add a relations column and see all the various relations for each one of these art assets. And maybe again, we wanna filter it down just to this art asset pipeline. Click here, find that art asset pipeline and say set as board relations filter. So there you have an example from a art asset team working in a game development studio's perspective. So for our last example, again, from a game development perspective, let's take a look at how the relations column could be used for maybe a character team working with a multi-level complex character pipeline. So this character team is working out of this character backlog. The pipelines are discipline specific. So we have a concept pipeline and maybe a modeling pipeline and an animation pipeline that each one of these characters has to go through, maybe simultaneously during certain phases. So for example, a new character comes in to the backlog. Eventually, it's going to start out in this concept pipeline. And if I scroll over to the existing relations column showing all of the places each one of these characters exist, we might want to filter this down specifically again to just the concept pipeline. So we can click here, concept, set as board relations filter. Now, as this character progresses, through that concept pipeline, through to feedback, to concept, to concept feedback, and then to concept round two, through an automation, it now might be ready to start on the modeling pipeline, starting with that proxy model. And you can see that new character was automatically added here. So now let's also add a relations column specific to the modeling pipeline. Like so. Now as this character continues to progress through modeling, proxy, and game, feedback, that same character is now ready to be worked on by the animation team where they can start their simultaneous animation pipeline flow. So let's add the relations column to highlight the animation pipeline status. Like 
like so. So now as this character progresses through through proxy animations, alpha animations, so on and so forth, back here in the backlog, we're able to track for all of the characters, the concept status, very clearly the modeling status, and also the animation status. So there you have it. Four good practical examples of how to use the Fabro Relations column, as well as a general overview. Thanks, and good luck with Fabro.